Hello everyone, and welcome to Doorstep Science. In this episode, we're going to be talking to you about a recent project that Caesar was involved in to aid the conservation of Australia's alpine region. The high country is one of our most precious environments. It's just a very small part of the Australian continent, but it has some of our most stunning landscapes and a whole range of flora and fauna species that are found nowhere else on Earth. Unfortunately, it's also under threat. From global warming, increasingly frequent and intense bushfires, and feral animals. And in just the last few years, there's been a new problem for this fragile ecosystem. An absence of moths, specifically bogong moths. Now, Australia actually has over 20,000 different species of moths. Some are nearly as big as your hand like this emperor gum moth. Others may be very colourful or look a little bizarre. Bogong moths might not appear exceptional, but they're actually one of the world's most remarkable insects because of their incredible migration abilities. Each spring, for thousands of years, bogong moths have migrated from lowland breeding grounds stretching from southeast Queensland down to the Riverina and possibly quite a bit further afield in huge numbers up to the Alpine region, where they literally chill out in caves and rock crevices over summer to escape the heat. The annual moth migration had great cultural significance for indigenous people who lived in areas surrounding the Alps, and is famous in modern times for huge aggregations of moths that can form at points along their migration routes, such as Parliament House Canberra and even Sydney. Much of what are believed to be breeding grounds for bogong moths is now used for agriculture. But the moths have been able to adapt. Their caterpillars, known to farmers as cutworms, feed over winter. While they can sometimes become minor agricultural pests, it's more often caterpillars of related moth species that don't migrate to the Alps that tend to be responsible for crop damage. After pupating just below the soil surface, Individual moths that emerge in spring may need to travel a thousand kilometres or more to reach the Alps. An amazing feat for a creature so small. How these moths manage to successfully navigate over such distances at night is not fully understood. But we know they can make use of wind systems and have excellent vision. And it's been discovered that they can sense the Earth's magnetic field. So it's like there's a tiny compass inside each of them. We don't know whether moths from different lowland areas somehow find their way to specific alpine locations, but we expect they at least follow somewhat different compass bearings. In just the last few years, the natural phenomenon of the bogong moth migration seems to have all but disappeared. In this cave near the summit of Mount Buffalo, for instance, we found no moths at all in October 2019. But thousands and thousands were recorded at this spot in the recent past. Some moths have still arrived at other locations in the Alps over the last few summers, but nothing like their normal numbers. The biggest cause of this dramatic decline has probably been recent drought, with winter rain across most of New South Wales at record lows. But there may well be other factors involved, such as an underlying warming trend and changes in pesticide use. This matters because the moths are an important food resource for native animals. Their recent absence has raised grave concerns, in particular for the critically endangered mountain pygmy possum. These guys live only in the Australian alpine region. They're the only marsupial that hibernates over winter, but they've been hammered by introduced cats and other ferals, and now can only be found in just a few alpine boulder fields, like this one. However, the bogong moth migration may be essential for the health of the entire alpine ecosystem. The arrival of billions of moths represents a huge transfer of vital nutrients, and the moths may play other roles like nocturnal pollination that we really know little about. In 2019, Caesar was asked by the Victorian government to help address some key gaps in our knowledge about bogong moths to inform actions that might help moth numbers recover and support alpine conservation. 
we undertook field collections of moths at a range of alpine locations in Victoria and New South Wales and at some other sites away from the Alps. Moths were caught at these different locations, mostly using netting and bucket traps at night with a UV light source. Then, from a few hundred individual moths, DNA was extracted and then sequenced. We then analysed thousands of variable genomic sites in these DNA sequences to look for patterns of relatedness among the moths that had been genotyped. What we found though was that moths from, say, Mount Buller were no more closely related to each other than they were to moths from Canberra, Wilson's Promontory, or anywhere else. In other words, the Bogong moth population overall appears to be very well mixed. Less is known about the moth's return migration at the end of summer, but our findings about how well mixed they are suggests that efforts to boost moth numbers at target sites in the Alps by locating and protecting particular source populations are not likely to be practical and may not even be possible. On the other hand, there's probably a large random element to their movements, so they should be able to find new areas and rebound strongly when environmental conditions improve. We don't yet know what effect the huge amount of smoke from last summer's catastrophic fires may have had on the Bogong moth population. But for those moths that managed to return to or find new suitable breeding sites, drought breaking rains in the last few months may offer better prospects, at least for now. Doorstep Science, it's our way of delivering good science straight to your door.